So th this kind of concludes the, the full scope of what it requires to move from poverty to abundance. Once you understand that just getting gold is not is not enough, like Sydney described in Monopoly, I think Monopoly is such an incredible game at this one thing, and that is and that is helping you see the importance of the goose that lays the golden eggs, which of course are the houses and the hotels that actually help you win the game. It's 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 helping you understand that you you don't need um, just money. You need something that produces money. <laughs> and so this is one of the hardest things to convince people of if they don't understand it. I remember the first time I realized this. I was on a beach um, in uh, Daytona Beach in Florida. And um, Jackson, you were, I think, just recently born. Um, and I had bought on eBay a, a set of tapes by um, Robert Kiyosaki, who uh, eventually wrote Rich Dad, Poor Dad. And I was listening to these tapes while I was walking up and down the beach with I, my mouth was open. I was like, oh. like, like suddenly realized that I needed to, I needed to acquire assets. And that was the only way I was going to get my family out of poverty. We were in poverty at the time. I had no way of really producing much of an income. I was about to resign from the one thing I knew how to do that barely kept us going, you know, gave us Milky White the cow. And I was like, um, how are we going to get this goose that lays the golden eggs? I didn't even know to look for the goose that lays the golden eggs um, until I read that book. And I always tell people, if you don't understand what we're talking about right now, you, you, you if you're doing what Sydney described and you play Monopoly by trying to stockpile cash, <laughs> then please go out and buy Rich Dad, Poor Dad. Um, and if you don't do that, at least listen to the Jack and the Beanstalk fairy tale and its meaning. You need to get the goose that lays the golden eggs. You need an asset that produces. And so we talk about this as the second kind of business. You get your freedom business, you know, you get you get some amount of cash, some amount of freedom, but that's not going to get your family out of poverty. You need to get some kind of asset that produces money. And we call that a scale business, something that actually um, moves in that direction. We talk a lot about that in our family and coaching. And then the final step in this, and I think the real goal, and what I loved, I, I was blown away when I saw that, that, that Jack and the Beastnock was describing this, is that the ultimate goal of this is to create a certain kind of lifestyle for your family where you can actually enjoy art. Like that that's symbolic of being able to do what you're passionate about. This is why the worst advice ever for people who are looking for employment is follow your passion. That's a that's great advice for people that are already already have a goose that lays golden eggs. And if you listen carefully to the people who say follow your passion um, and that have been successful, they already have a goose that lays golden eggs. <laughs> and so they are obsessed with the harp, the golden harp. They're like, yeah, of course you should go get a golden harp. Um, do not go for the golden harp first. <laughs> that is not how it works. <laughs> um, so, so, but you, you are trying to get there eventually. So we call that a legacy business, which is really the, the, the capital producing assets that a, that a family acquires in order to give them the kind of freedom to be able to pursue the things they really care about. In our case, it's mostly ministry related. So, so once we start to develop assets that, that are producing money uh, for our family, we begin to focus more and more of our time on, on, uh, on ministry, on art, on culture. And really what this is describing is, is how culture is created within a home. And it, it has to be undergirded by these first two elements, right? The cash and the assets. Um, and so this is this this roadmap in Jack and the Beanstalk is so, um, yeah, it just it's it's so uh, well described the actual journey and the tensions that are created. Um, and the thing that you have to understand is if you start to seize control of these assets, you are going to be in grave danger. Like what you hear? Be sure to leave a rating and review for this podcast wherever you use streaming. because the giant is coming after you. Um, because as soon as you get to this place, protecting that is going to be really difficult. There, are, these, these are protected by people that are powerful and they do not want you to acquire them. Uh, and so you're going to be in a fight. You're going to be in a, and you're gonna have to figure out what to do. And so there's a final part of the story. And again, we have a moment where the maternal is redeemed um, because in a lot of the stories, the, the mother actually is the one that chops down the, the beanstalk in this the version of the story. She gets the ax for Jack who chops down the beanstalk and is able to uh, sever the connection between, um, between Jack and the giant. And um, man, I, those were some of the most difficult moments in my journey of trying to acquire assets. Because every time I began to really succeed, then whoever 
there, there was always somebody on the other end that if you don't sever your connection to them, that they, they want back or they think that they, you owe them what you've created. That happens so often. And that's a constant story I hear from guys uh, that are on this journey. It's difficult to sever that connection. And I, if you can't do it and they're able to um, bully you out of the assets or legally reacquire them, um, there's oftentimes some kind of tension or fight that has to develop between um, between the giant, the one who uh, the one who wants the assets, or maybe at one one time had them. This could be a competitor. There's lots of ways. This is, I'm not describing something that I think is is illegal. It's just there's always there's always a fight because again, treasure is people aren't. If treasure was easy to get, then you know the the story would be very different. You know, we would just go and 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 pick it off the ground. Um, this involves a real a real dangerous moment and. And once that's achieved, then you have this moment where you you bring abundance, stability, and art and culture into the home, and that's that's what we really want to see for all you guys listening to this. Um, that's why this story is so important to understand that these steps and the way that you take them in order to get to the place where you have abundance as a family is so important.